It's time for the Week in Review. Look at national, regional, and local stories from the past week. Here's Brandon Hansen, Managing Editor of the Chewila Independent, and Scott Allen, Managing Director of Northern Lights Public Radio. On this week's show, we turn to Brandon and start with some awesome stories about softball uh, and baseball, right? Uh, yes, yeah, softball, baseball, and track. Uh, you know, about a year ago uh, when it was kind of found out that Chuilo was going to drop down to the two Bs, and everybody's kind of worried about the change and everything now. Well, you know what the result is? Is we place higher in all sports? <laughs> Me being super stressed out trying to figure out how to cover all these teams at the state <laughs> tournament. Because they're doing so well, right? Yeah, they're doing so well. Uh, I applied for like nine press passes yesterday because I was like, well, we got to go to that tournament. Somebody's going to that tournament. Like, it was ridiculous how, how many press passes I had to get for this weekend. Wow. Uh, so we have our uh, state softball team, the Chuila Cougars, uh, going to the 2B tournament in Yakima. And... Uh, they placed fifth in the 1A tournament for two years in a row before this. So they've been to the state tournament before at a higher level. So it'll be interesting to see how they do that in this 2B level. And then uh, the state tracksters, the Chuila Cougars and Colville, uh, will be heading to Cheney. Uh, for the state uh, championship track meet there. Uh, also, the 1B schools like Hunters and Selkirk and, you, you know, Northport, all those kind of smaller schools around the area. Uh, Springdale, too, will probably send a few athletes uh, out to Cheney. Uh, one thing to kind of look at for Chuila is Lily Curry is going for her third uh, straight uh, state championship in something. Uh, her first year, she won the 100-meter hurdles as a freshman won the 300-meter hurdles as a sophomore, and as a junior now, she could uh, win a third state championship in either the 200-meter run uh, or the 100- or 300-meter uh, hurdles there. So she has the best wow. time in the state for all three events. And so. you told me, like, the top three times that she has, or the top three uh, times are all hers? Yeah, all hers. Ma- you know, I don't want to jinx her or anything. That makes her sound unstoppable. Uh, she's <laughs> she's a great athlete. Uh, there's just, you know, the uh, kind of people uh, we've all kind of, if you've been to uh, high school here in Chuila, you all, all know each class has, like, one or two kids that are just, phenomenally talented there uh the thing about lily is she's probably a division one track and field athlete there nice. um hopefully it, it's looking like with her times as uh, she's going to some of these national meets and doing well uh which certainly catches uh a lot of the attention of, of college coaches and stuff like that i hate to be i hate to talk about the next level because it, it sounds so small town or she's gonna go far you know <laughs> but but she really is like i could see her doing uh, some some great things at like a Pac-12 school or something like that. So. You know the the Curies, the family, right? You got to give credits to the parents because I don't care whether you're talking theater or sports at what it is. They have some talented kids. Yeah, they really. Yeah. How do. many it's Curries have we, have we gone wow. through? Wow, you know yeah. I've, I've lived in Chihuahua so long, and it just I mean uh, they're always at the top of their game. So you got to say good job, mom and dad. Right, and I, they're always such nice kids. Too. Yes, yeah, yeah. Hey, very impressed. Curries, go go go. When I <laughs> I, I first moved back. Uh, I did a story. It was like one of my first stories uh, for the Chuila Independent was uh, one flew over the cuckoo's nest, like one of Janet's last shows there at, at uh, the high school, and uh, Meredith Curry played Nurse, Nurse Ratchet. Oh, oh my goodness. Like that such was a good actor. Yeah, one of the best. Like I can't – it was Nurse Ratchet. Like I can't – it was just like, oh, yep, that's – and for a high schooler to pull off a performance like that, I was like... Meredith was great. I remember our very first talent show. I think she was 14. Right. And, and she dyes her hair red, shows up in a red dress, and sings some great 50s music. It was amazing. Right. You know? So, yeah, talented kids, talented family. And Jimmy um, Curry, like a oh eight-degree black actor. belt. Remember the video game Double Dragon? Yes. Actually based on the life of Jimmy Curry. <laughs> Just saying. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so uh, exciting weekend. Now, this has got to be really tough for you because after you get through this weekend at Yakima, now you got to come back. You got to sort through all the pictures and put your stories together. How do you do that in three days? Well, you see this coffee right here? <laughs> That's it. Times it by eight. So. Fueled by caffeine. <laughs> Fueled by caffeine. Right. Uh, with the softball team, uh, yeah, keep a lookout for the, the Cougars. Uh, boy, they have a, 
a lineup that can hit the ball hard. They have great pitching, great pitching depth. Uh, Tom Skoke has done a great job of that program. Now a little to our north, Colville, which – uh, we we come in loud and clear in Colville now with the with the, the radio we do yeah uh, historical season up in Colville the Ch- uh, Colville baseball team is in the state semifinals first time in school history the baseball teams in the uh, state semifinals Good job. there and uh, Blake Sorgel I hope I said your name right dude uh, was uh, he was a coach three years ago or took over the program three years ago last two years their season ended in districts and this year has just been an absolute turnaround. Uh, they've just been one of the best teams in the state and they got some great pitching great uh, hitting all that kind of stuff and they're they're kind of fun to watch out on the field there so uh, so and, like this weekend everybody's leaving town yeah basically there's <laughs> gonna be like four people left here so uh, <laughs> did you see all the signs on the side of the road for all the Chuila yeah say it's yeah awesome. it's like half the town so I don't know what's everybody's gonna... leaving <laughs> and uh, Colville softball also uh, punched their ticket to uh, state last weekend so they'll be heading to the state 1a uh, softball tournament uh down in the tri-cities and uh, expect great things from them the thing about uh this used to be the league that chwila was in the nea league the 1a league yes it's like one of the best if not the best softball league in the state usually the state champion comes from this league here and i was talking to uh you know Colville's coach about like what happened why is softball so big here and what she said is softball is huge in spokane and i i agree it's become uh spokane has become kind of a softball factory in terms of putting out great softball players and just uh you know all the select teams all things like that and uh, so you have a lot of these coaches professional coaches offering camps things like that so these outlying communities like Chewila, um and Colville can play summer balls summer softball in these Spokane leagues or you know against these teams and also get private coaching to be like hey how do you build fix their your skills yeah. so um so that's why the NEA league has turned into one of the best uh, 1A softball leagues in the state there so right. uh just a lot of athletics this weekend sounds so. like you'll enjoy to watch those uh it's it's a lot of fun softball is just an exciting sport it's a little quicker than baseball and uh, it seems like uh, big momentum swings and stuff it's uh one of the more fun uh, sports to kind of shoot take photos of because everybody's screaming and having a good time so i've always wondered why they call it softball because i've been hit by one before and they don't feel very soft yeah they're not soft <laughs> goodness <laughs> nothing goodness. soft about it um all right big yeah. news are we wrapped up with sports there? yes we are wrapped up with sports big news chuila valley land trust six hundred and seventy six thousand dollar grant explain what's going on here brandon yeah the chuila valley land trust uh, they're trying to acquire a 400 acre piece of Hancocked Forest uh, Management Timberland, which is uh, next to the Chula Golf Course. Um, they they call the the land or the area Boise Hill, and uh, since it was kind of left over from uh, property owned by Boise Cascade. Okay. And uh, what they want to do with this 400 acres is just set it aside for like recreation. So uh, so Chula has an area where you can go to mountain bike or you can go to hike or you know kind of whatever you you want to do outdoors. And this is important because as you know around here, there's a lot of private ground and things like that that you don't quite know you know the access right you're not sure. not sure and you're trespassing Ooh. right right or you're not sure what the future of that access will be in 10 20 years so this kind of sets aside a, a considerable chunk of land for the people of Chuila to enjoy as outdoor recreation which is super important around here um they recently got a grant from the recreation conservation office which is a state office and they will be getting six hundred and seventy-six thousand dollars to partially fund the acquisition of the property. Uh, so this group is super pumped because this is a huge step into getting that property and uh, turning it into uh, a, a great kind of gem in the community. Uh, something that that you know not only you or I can use, but down the road our, our kids can enjoy and things like that, which becomes important because we've seen so many stories about. Uh, land access and things like that uh this this is important for those people that love riding bikes or love hiking to be like okay i know i can go up there i can go on a hike this morning and uh, i'm not it's beautiful up there. yeah and it's beautiful up there and i'm not gonna get a closed gate in the door so nice you know um so this is great uh jake wilson he's uh one of the brewery boys as we say uh he's the president of the group and he's he's pretty excited about that right. so good job jake yeah good job jake oh and they are uh, doing trivia nights uh we are past their most recent trivia night but 
Uh, Quartzite Brewing has been raising money by hosting these these trivia nights. They, I believe they do once a month, and uh, you can kind of go there and uh, you can sign up for a few dollars and form your own trivia team, and uh, it goes to donate to this group. Which this this is kind of funny. My uh, my cousin who doesn't live here anymore, but he he came back specifically for trivia night, and their team won. So he got his paper in, or he got his picture in the paper, and everybody <laughs> is like, what? Chris is back in town. What's going on? He just came in for trivia. Night, huh? <laughs> he just came in for trivia, and they they were kind of mad. He didn't call him up and tell anybody, but he was in town. Uh, they just found out by seeing the picture in the paper, so that All that right. kind of cracked me. Well, up it looks there. like they the the trust group formed a five hundred one c because it says their do- donations are tax deductible. So if this is something you want to fund, Chihuahua Valley Land Trust, PO Box three hundred two. Chihuahua, Washington, 99109. So P.O. Box 302 if you would like to make a tax-deductible donation. And I'm sure you can go into the brewery, too, and just right. give, it, give a donation and buy right. a beer. I don't know. So uh, should we talk about the bad news? I feel like the bearer of bad news here. This this really, uh, 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 you know, we, we see things getting better in the construction fields and, and the job market. But as far as the infrastructure yeah, I feel of our country, and this is just a you know, Chihuahua is a microcosm of that. It's still on a downward slope, like it has been for years. Right. And this is, is you know, having a, a parent who, who went through a long term care situation. This is really scary to me for people in Chihuahua. I don't like it at all. So, lay it out there, Brandon. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Providence announced on Tuesday that they are shutting down their long term care unit at the uh, the Chihuahua St. Joseph's Hospital there. Uh, they released this press release kind of talking about, uh, hey, we're, we're going to shut down this unit. Uh, there was a lot of reasons uh, for this. Uh, one of the decisions was, um, hey, we're, we're going to continue to provide, you know, health care services in this area. And, uh, you know, we feel like, you know, we can utilize the hospital in different ways other than a, a long-term care unit. Um, they also said it was increasingly difficult to hire full-time qualified staff to care for residents in this area. And that is actually a big issue in this area is finding skilled workers and, um, you know, keeping them here. Uh, so it's been kind of uh, difficult for Providence. Uh, my fiance is a, a CNA and they are in high demand because it's a, it's a tough job. It is oh, yeah. not easy. And, uh, yeah, the Providence was paying a pretty penny to just attract people to to do this job in this area. Yeah, I saw something about they were paying more than average yeah, wages more to than get average. people to come to Chihuahua. Right, right. And that's kind of the skilled workforce. Force. Um, I, I believe uh, K.S. Brooks, who writes for us, uh, also wrote a piece in the Silverado uh, about uh, the vanishing trades in yeah, the county. Yeah, and it is a big issue around here, the, the lack of skilled workers, the lack of trade jobs. Uh, it it kind of is a ping pong effect. Like It's like, hey, it'd be great to get a factory up here, but where are you going to find the skilled workers? You know, that's All the welders and yes. machine operators and all that kind of stuff you're going to need, uh, re- right. the people to repair the machines, whatever, yeah. And it, it'd be great if, you know, Alco was still going and those workers were, you know, readily, readily in the orbit of this area. But we haven't had a major industry thing here in years where before remember when the magnesite plant closed down uh, just a few years later alcoa opened up so i think a lot of people are able to transition their skills um but now we're in a, we're in a, a time now where it's been we haven't had anything like that in the right. area in so long where do you get those skilled workers right and not to say nobody in this county is you know skilled or anything no you need high numbers to you know you need everybody to be skilled to be able to keep these things i'm in the medical field especially i I run into the same problem when when i fantasize about the future for the radio station and providing jobs in the community and and what i really want is is an experienced manager well that'll begin here that's something i'm probably not going to be able to find uh, as somebody with 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 five years experience or more in radio who knows that type of programming software all that kind of stuff I mean I would have to hunt for that one position I would have to hunt out of the area and I also know but I've got a great base from all the volunteers right. is that anybody I bring in in this area more than likely 
I'm going to have to train them. Right. And depending on what they're doing, that could take a, a, a really long time. Correct. So, so But, I, yeah, the radio station's in the same boat. It's really hard to find people with, with that type of experience already in the county because the businesses ha- have not been here. And, and especially when you're looking at, you know, in Stevens that field, County right now, we've got three that. radio stations in the whole county. You right. Know? You, you've got uh, uh, Colville's and us, and, and then Colville has a 100-watt, you know, religious station, too. But right. but uh, that doesn't bring a lot of skilled workers for that field, so I totally get it. Right, and newspaper, same deal. A reporter opening is always tough to fill. Cause That's how you got how, brought back right, into town, right? Right, how many journalists are hanging out just, just you know, waiting hang- for work in Stevens County. Right, right. Yeah. Just um, And not to say there's there's other fields that there's probably a lot of workers in, but it's certainly not. Uh, these these other specialized fields and things like this. Healthcare is a big deal. We've talked about this. Our legislators have been screaming from the mountaintop about access to healthcare in the rural areas, and it's like you said, it's infrastructure that's slowly degrading. Um, a- another reason Providence gave was the uh, the cost of long term care has been growing, skyrocketing, and that's true of any healthcare thing has just been the cost has grown so much and then uh i can't imagine if somebody can't pay or you know something happens uh or maybe medicare doesn't cover all the costs or you know there's there's so many health financial things that can happen uh then i imagine these financial or these healthcare institutions have to just eat that cost and that's got to be a hard pill to swallow too it is and and then there's this whole twisted system too that i don't i don't know if everybody buddy uh, knows about but when it comes to the state and your inability to pay so so and i'm going to get give an example um here and i can i can share the one that happened to my mom but so so you you own your home and maybe it's even all paid for uh you're in your, in your 70s and one of the spouses ends up in a long-term care situation and you don't have the money to pay that monthly bill um you haven't had you know, high-end insurances to cover uh, uh, that kind of stuff. So all of a sudden it becomes out of pocket and you don't have the money to pay, but you own a house. The state's going to start tacking that bill onto your house. And when your spouse dies and maybe, you know, you might be lucky enough to live there in some kind of arrangement, but you can actually go through that whole process and lose your home. So what you saved for or your parents saved for, you know, when you're looking at like me and you, and this happened to me. So my mom and dad, uh, they weren't, wealthy but they saved hard and they owned businesses all their life they right. retired with about three hundred thousand dollars in the bank right. dad went into long-term care for like six years when he came out my mom had twenty two thousand dollars left wow that's amazing the state of north dakota you know and my parents were were old school where i told them spend your money your kids will figure it out on their own right. you know and spend your money you worked hard for it all your life but they both wanted to there was three kids left and and when they died they wanted to be able to leave a hundred thousand dollars to right. each of their children well you know what state of north dakota has it right and that's happening all over our country health care has gotten so screwed up now that that they're letting the health care system and i'm sorry to use this word but rape the American people and what they've worked hard you know they tell us to live the American dream and have the white picket fence in the house and you do that your whole life and at the end they come take it away right through and, health care yeah and we, we, we've seen this this is a microcosm of what's happening in the country how many Americans have you know declared bankruptcy over medical issues and things like that and um, all right <laughs> I, I I know a lot of people want to slam Providence about this uh, in terms of you know well that's not good for the community and stuff uh, you still have to consider these organizations have to remain solvent. They have problems that they're dealing with, right. too, in our society, like like these higher wages. Right. Yeah, they, they have their own issues. What's really sad is the the elderly couple where one of them is in long-term care here in Chihuahua, and now he has to get bumped to Spokane, and that elderly person maybe has transportation issues yes. or, or driving issues. How do they get to see their loved one? How do they get to spend time with them? It, it becomes a huge inconvenience. Um, they wanted to close the hospital a few years ago. Right. That came up as an issue. Can you imagine if that happened? I'm already scared when I'm up at my place at Kettle Falls and I'm running a chainsaw. If yep. I cut my foot off, I'm going to die before I get to a hospital. I'm so far away. Right. Well, that could happen right here in Chihuahua now, too. Right. The, Deer the Park distance. lost theirs. Right. So, so, you're, so now anybody in the county has got to make it to Spokane? Or, or hopefully Colville or something yeah, like that. Yeah, and that's, yeah, yeah. that's a long time. And We're going to need more helicopters. Right. 
<laughs> we true. are. Where's the, you know, who's going to cover that expense? And we, again, this is a, a common thread where the access to health care. I mean, you try and get a doctor's appointment, you know, the next day in this town kind of deal. They're overworked. I you feel better sorry be for him. I, I swear, <laughs> Dr. Larson's pager must be going off ding, 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 ding all the time. Um, it, it's just... Gosh, this right is a national trend. workers, too, right, right. there. Yeah. yeah. This is a national trend. It just, <laughs> it, it's amazing how, uh, you know, your headlines come back to your hometown, and it's kind of sad. I will say, uh, just because I know people are going to ask about this, like, what about the current residents in the uh, the long-term care center? Uh, it'll stay open until everybody finds a p- place. Does that make sense? So they're yes. not just going to be, <laughs> they're not just going to be like, all right, get out kind of deal. They, they are working to find a, a place for everybody uh, who's currently in the long-term care unit. There, and that's so. another whole area that's taxed beyond belief. Right. You know, yeah. Right. Tough stuff, man. Yeah, it is tough. And uh, I, I don't think we could come <laughs> up with a, anything close to a solution in a radio program there. Yeah. So. All right, some parting shots. Um, I know my uh, co-host has gone to this. Between the Rivers is uh, happening, starts this weekend, right? Yep, yep. Uh, Memorial uh, Day weekend well, it starts basically on Memorial Day, I think, Monday, and goes all week. And I, I've been up there the last two years. And it's a very unique event, kind of a primitive skills gathering. And I, I just think it, it's a cool feeling to go up there and see these people do uh, just some very basic skills, you know, kind of back to – uh, back to a time before smartphones and, you know, all our modern amenities. And it's really cool to see. Uh, I know Jean's probably talked your ear off about it. There. Oh, yeah, for years. But so she, <laughs> she loves it. You know, and they are skills, when they talk primitive skills, they are skills we've lost. Right. And, and if something, you know, really cataclysm, Yellowstone caldera, whatever, something ever really bad uh, happened in our planet, these are the people you're going to want to know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <You're> gonna... <laughs> somebody who knows how to make a forge. Right. You, you, you know, uh, yeah, somebody. Or clothes. Um, I'm no, really clothes. amazed at, like, uh, uh, Jean and Daisy's skill. I, I make jokes and I call them hippie girls, and, and they are. They're bo- both very earthy, but it's really cool. They've got skills I don't have. I can walk out in the woods with either one of them. I can walk out in the front of the radio station and the weeds coming up in the dirt, and Jean can tell me every one and which one's edible. Um, <laughs> if I am lost in the woods by myself, I'm probably going to starve. Right. Okay. <laughs> if I am lost uh, 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 with uh, uh, Daisy or Jean, I'm going to eat pretty well. Yeah. I, I might not like what I'm putting in my mouth, but I'm going to live. You're going to you know, live. And I find that totally impressive. So. Right. Right. So, yeah, that's going on. Also on Monday, Memorial Day, uh, the Chewila VFW and Legion are holding Memorial Day services. Uh, we have the schedule posted in uh, the newspaper, uh, but it's uh, basically all morning. They're traveling to a different Stevens County ceremony or cemeteries and doing a Memorial Day service, playing taps. They'll have a kind of a uh, honor guard there. I think that's what they call them. Uh, they'll be kind of firing off ro- rifles in remembrance and things like that. They do that uh, every year. In yeah, they do that very uh, every year. I will say it's very powerful. Uh, and very important to keep doing that. And you really got to take your hats off to these these guys that do this year after year because that's a big time commitment, um, and that's uh, that's a long day for them. <laughs> like it's a to, to keep doing that there. So uh, if you get a chance to um, check out the paper with the the schedule there, I don't know the times off the top of my head, but uh, they will be around to all the kind of southern Stevens County uh, cemeteries there. So right. keep an eye out for that. And also this weekend, this weekend's just busy. It's crazy again. Yes, uh, Chewila Quilt Show going on at the Jenkins High School. And uh, this is the Roaring Twenties because it's been going on for 20 years. So they'll they'll have, I believe, some like uh, quilts throughout the 20 years of, of having the quilt show. And, uh, and it's a lot of quilts. And all that stuff again. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's a lot of a lot of quilts. I wish I was more skilled and adept in talking about quilts, but... Uh, no, that's not my uh, <laughs> expertise not there. So, And Park Avenue Players has a new play opening up this weekend, Sylvia, which is a comedy. Yes. So those are always Sylvia my favorite, the comedies. Look so. at this weekend. 
Busy again. Yeah. Tooele is a busy place. Stevens County is a busy place. Always something to do. And, of course, you are kind of like the center hub. Uh, we get Goodness. we get public service announcements requests, and we add those in. But we, you guys at the Independent do an excellent job. I invite everybody to go to your website, TooeleIndependent.com, and, and look at the events calendar. It's amazing. You guys do an excellent job, and thanks for sharing that with radio. And email your events because there there's go. always a there few that go. fall a few the cracks there. Yep. So uh, just, yeah, get them to us, and we'll try and get them in the calendar. And the relationship works out really good because you get them, and we steal them from you, and now everybody's got them. No, that's, e- either way. That's fine so, with me. So, that's, yeah, it yeah. works out great. Right. <laughs> then we don't get complaints about who, nobody who knew works about on that this. because they're doing a really good job. Um, it's usually me. So okay. I mm-hmm. usually, through the week, uh, if I see an event pop up, uh, I'll – copy it down and put it on that that web page there so right. try and stay updated so sometimes i get a little behind but that, right. that's just the nature of the business so. all right safe travels and we'll see you next week and we will look forward to all the pictures from this weekend's <laughs> wrap-up of high school spring sports in uh, the next edition of the Twilio independent right yeah i'm kind of afraid this might end up going down to yakima kind of be like the hangover like i might end up on like a hotel roof with like a bad sunburn or something so uh if you don't <laughs> hear from me if you don't hear from me, head down there and start looking for me. Start and my, looking around the <laughs> rooftops. <laughs> yeah, just watch out for any strange guys like <laughs> in trunks and stuff. <laughs> I'm Scott. I'm from Chuila, and I, we lost our Brandon. We think he's here somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> got to watch out in Yakima. All right. So, all right, that's our show for this week. I am Scott. I'm Brandon. Thanks for listening to the Week in Review with Brandon Hansen, Managing Editor of the Chewila Independent, and Scott Allen, Managing Director of Northern Lights Public Radio. Past episodes are in video format on the Chewila Independent's website and on KCHW's YouTube channel. This program was recorded and filmed at the KCHW FM Studios in Chewila, Washington.